Hi there! This is the second video of our life and our love story and how we met. This year we are married for 30 years and part of our anniversary is sharing our love story with you. If you have not watched the first video yet, you can find the link in the description below. I'm Tipu, I'm from Bangladesh. And I'm Livia and I'm from the Netherlands. And now we live in Florida, the sunshine state of the United States. In this series of our love story, we are also going to tell you what challenges we faced and how we overcome those challenges in the four countries we lived in. Join us on the adventurous soul's journey by subscribing, liking the video and clicking the notification bell ding ding so you'll be notified as soon as we have a new video comes out and you'll never have to miss out. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts because we're going <laughs> on an adventurous, another adventurous ride. In this video you are going to find out what Livia was doing in Netherlands while I was in Bangladesh preparing to study abroad. I was living in the Netherlands in a small town called Culemborg, not far from Utrecht. In our town, foreigners were very rare. One of those foreigners was my dad, who came from Hungary. Since I was young, I was very curious about other cultures. My dad had obliged me to learn French, German and English since the age of six. He was very strict and a real perfectionist. Wow, so early you learned so many languages? Yes, my dad had bought language courses for adults that I watched every week on television that didn't have any for children. Despite the pressure though, I knew it was good for me. My dad had very high ambitions for me. I wasn't allowed to play with other children or go to their homes or birthday parties. Instead, I was learning languages. Why do you think your dad was that strict? Within the Dutch culture, there's an expression, do normal when you're really crazy enough. But my Hungarian dad wanted me to stand out instead and get top grades. My dad was raised in a very strict manner and he had a hard time during his upbringing as well. He had lost his mom when he was 13 and was a refugee at the age of 17 when the Russians occupied Hungary and he flew in 1956. He never overcame came his trauma and fear for the Russian secret police and for years he wasn't allowed to see his father, brothers and sisters which had a very big impact on his happiness and well-being. I was able to know him better because he died when I was nine years old. I can only imagine how tough it must have been for him and for your family. Thank you for sharing with us, my dear. Can you share some moments about your father that you keep close to your heart? Of course. To this day, I treasure the few moments I saw him very happy. He loved playing the violin passionately. He loved playing chess and won local tournaments. He even organized a Hungarian cultural festival in the town nearby. He was a beloved yoga teacher and he also loved eating spicy. In one hand, he put a bread, in the other a chili. And then while eating them, sweat was dripping from his forehead. And he loved it. This was the best thing for him. In any case, whatever happens, I know he meant the best for me. And if it wasn't for him, I would not be who I am today. Because of his unhappiness and struggles, I was committed to having a happy, harmonious family and to thrive despite past and all circumstances. That is beautiful to hear, my princess. <laughs> when did your mom get remarried? 
When I was 10, I got a stepdad, a Dutch man who had worked on a cruise ship, traveling the world. And he had had a restaurant before he met my mom as well. I was very impressed with his stories, opening my mind to different cultures. And he made me dream of traveling to many countries and living abroad. Does your stepfather talk about Bangladesh? I do not believe he visited Bangladesh. He did not talk about Bangladesh, but he did talk about India. And later he and my mom visited India and bought beautiful Indian home decorations for our home. Did you ever eat an Indian food? One day my stepdad and my mom told me that they wanted to go to an Indian restaurant in Utrecht. Eating Indian food, I said, no thank you, like a teen. <laughs> I never had eaten Indian food, nor did I meet any Indian or Bangladeshi people. But with some conviction, they managed to convince me anyway. And we took the train to Utrecht and ate in one of the Indian restaurants located at one of the kennels. Now I'm curious. Did you like the Indian food when you eat for the first time? I loved it. I got papadam with chutney, which <laughs> I loved. I got lassi and the most delicious curry and naan. Once I realized my liking for Indian food was essential to meet you <laughs> later in life. Now you must be wondering if I met Tipu there. We are happy to share with you guys our adventurous journey and where we met. We are going to share it with you in future videos. There is so much to tell you guys. So stay tuned to know what challenges I faced when I tried to get my Belgian visa without my parents knowing it at the age of 17. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and click the notification bell so you will not miss out on the next adventurous episodes of our love story. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye.